kitchen sinks are all on sale at Handyman. Check out our drop-ins, under mounts, and beautiful farm sinks. Kitchen sinks, all on sale at Handyman. To help remodel your home, Handyman. This morning, a car theft caught on camera. How this crime is just one of nearly 100 cases Sioux Falls police have already investigated this year. Plus, our mild winter is helping crews in the battle against the emerald ash borer. We're checking on their progress in removing ash trees and which neighborhoods in Sioux Falls they're targeting. Good morning. This is Kelloland on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have a long list of boredom busters coming up. But first, our top story. American citizens returning from China landed in Omaha, Nebraska last night for a two-week quarantine after being screened for the coronavirus in Texas. The coronavirus evacuees were sent to Omaha because the local medical community there has worked closely with the federal government in the past. They'll spend their quarantine at nearby Camp Ashland where they'll be evaluated for any symptoms. Those identified as having symptoms will be isolated at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and evaluated further. The screening process is expected to take about one to two hours. The coronavirus has a 14-day incubation period and shares symptoms with the flu virus. Sioux Falls Police investigated nearly 90 cases of stolen cars in the, in the city last month. And security, a video obtained by Kelloland News, shows the crimes don't appear to be slowing down in the month of February. The video from a convenience store at Rice Street and Cliff Avenue Friday morning shows a man getting out of a van and hopping into the driver's seat of Shane Van Driesen's pickup. Van Driesen tried to chase after him but couldn't get the man to stop. Van Driesen says police chased the suspect for a short time down Cliff Avenue, but because he was driving so dangerously, they called off their pursuit. Tree trimmers are making steady progress, cutting down ash trees to prevent the spread of the emerald ash borer in Sioux Falls. This year, they're targeting trees mostly in the southwestern part of the city. The goal is to remove 2,100 trees. So far, they've cut down around 600. The milder winter has been a big help. Well, we're just going to keep picking away at them. Like I said, we, had, uh, we have from 41st down to 57th and Sertoma over to Marion. And we're just going to kind of work them off in four quadrants and pick away. Probably stay in on the real, real cold days and take advantage of the warm days. Crews are cutting down the trees while the emerald ash borer is dormant. Their work ends on Memorial Day. Meteorologist Grant Smith is tracking snow in the weekend forecast. Good morning, Grant. Yes, Perry. We are, uh, are seeing some snowfall moving in uh, later today, and it will move from west to east throughout the afternoon into the overnight and then coming to an end uh, tomorrow. But we do have some weather alerts to talk about. We've got winter weather advisories in the blue, winter storm watches in the yellow, and even those red counties in Minnesota, that is a winter storm warning. These all stretch from western South Dakota all the way through central uh, South Dakota and into uh, eastern Kelowland. So as far as the forecast here, we've got this uh, next winter storm coming in from the west. So there's a quick recap once again. Blue winter weather advisory, yellow is winter storm watch, and then the reds are winter storm warning. I expect that these winter storm watches in the yellow will be upgraded to an advisory or a warning later on today. So here's a look at your future cast. we got the system coming in from the west. So the timing brings the rain and snow into western South Dakota this afternoon, but then not to eastern Kalalin until this evening, and then right along and to the north of the warm front and that low pressure. That's where we could see the heaviest uh, band of snow. And as that low pressure wraps around, the snow will last into tomorrow morning, but it should come to an end tomorrow afternoon. We'll talk about how much snow you can expect and take a look at the seven day here in just a couple minutes. All right, thank you very much, Grant. Well, it is the final weekend of the Sioux Falls Winter Carnival, which is a fundraiser for the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Sioux Empire. Now, today's activities include a family snow fest at the 8th and Railroad Center from 10 a.m. to noon, a carnival at Game Chest from 11 to 9, a fat bike fest and fat bike race at Tuthill Park goes from noon to 1.30, a brew fest and winter games at the 8th and Railroad Center goes from 2 to 6. A winter jam also at the 8th and Railroad Center goes from 6 to 11. And laser tubing wraps up the day at Great Bear Recreation Park from 9.30 to 11.30 tonight. The South Dakota Wildlife Expo and Banquet is a benefit for Warriors Never Give Up, a nonprofit that provides outdoor adventures for disabled veterans. The event gets underway at 1 o'clock in the Expo Building at the WH Lion Fairgrounds. Activities include games, raffles, auctions, and a meal. Tickets are $25.
You're invited to meet the Good Earth Critters. Check out the snakes, turtles, salamanders, and other animals on display in the visitor center at the Good Earth State Park at Blood Run, southeast of Sioux Falls. The event goes from 2 to 3. The cost is a park entrance license. Enjoy story time and an animal encounter during the Bookworms Reading Program at the Great Plains Zoo. It starts at 1 o'clock in the Kelloland Education Center. The cost is a zoo admission. The Sioux Empire Fair Association presents Bulls and Bronx, an action-packed night of bull riding and saddle bronx starting at 7.30 tonight in the Expo Building of the Fairgrounds. Tickets are $20, free for kids 5 and under. The Henry Thorne benefit at our Redeemer Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls includes a meal of wild game chislick and chili plus a silent auction. The benefit goes from 4 to 7. Your free will donation will help cover the cost of leukemia patient Henry Thorne's bone marrow transplant. Grant. All right, Perry, here's another look at the forecast here. The idea behind the forecast here is we got the center of low pressure that's moving through from the west, from the uh, northwest uh, through to the southeast. It's going to move in later today and then exit the area tomorrow morning. And the idea behind the snowfall forecast and where the heaviest snowfall will be will be right where that warm front finally sets up. So it's going to swing in from the south, and as it pushes to the north, that's going to allow for that heavy banding of snow to develop. And right now we're looking at kind of highlighting the area near Highway 14 and then into the Minnesota area in Buffalo Ridge in southwest Minnesota. So that's the idea behind it. So anywhere uh, to the north of this warm front, and then the northern areas, and then behind you have the best chances to see snowfall. But if you are in the south, central, even farther south, you can have a lower chance to actually see uh, the snowfall in the area. So that's going to last through the overnight, and then tomorrow, leftover snow in the morning. And as that low pressure kicks out of here, we should be seeing the snowfall come to an end by the afternoon. Leftover clouds, and then surface high pressure settles in. That should help clear out the clouds as well, bringing us that clear skies for your later parts of Sunday and even into your Monday. But once again, the snowfall forecast here, where that warm front swings. Wings in where that finally stops. That's where we're looking at seeing the greatest amount of snowfall. So right now it's highlighting kind of near the Huron to Watertown Brookings area. Kind of a wide range though in that four to eight inches because where exactly that hype that uh, that warm front sets up is going to be a big factor. But farther to the north and to the south, lighter amounts of snow, and then also to the west. Lighter amounts of snow, two to four inches, and then the Black Hills, uh, northern Black Hills could see just a little bit more. So the uh, risk here for at least one inch of snow, high risk for the area in red for much of the Cowland area, and then a risk for at least three inches or more. There you can see that moderate risk. So that's where we're highlighting where that warm front will actually set up. When it swings to the north, it'll stop and then begin to swing back through. So this is the area where we're highlighting where that warm front will stop, and that's where we'll see the most amount of snow. So as far as the seven-day forecast, what you're going to notice is it's going to be warmer, warmer than average air. So that's where these yellows and reds are that's warmer than the climate average air. But then for the second half of the seven-day forecast, a bowling ball of very cold air will settle in, dropping our highs back down to the yeah, teens and 20s for the second half of the seven day. We'll get to that here in just a second. But today's temperatures, 20s and 30s, warmer 40s in the west. And then tonight, clouds and snow passing through the area as temperatures cool to the teens and 20s. And then tomorrow, the snowfall comes to an end. But then the afternoon, those winds will pick up so we could still see some of that blowing snow, breezy winds at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And then your seven day forecast, there's that warmer weather moving in to start the seven day. But then that much colder air later in the week, Sioux Falls seeing highs near 20 single-digit lows. Aberdeen could see dipping below zero when that colder air finally arrives at the very end of the seven-day. But pushing the mid-30s there on Monday, but then it's kind of a slow cooling trend. Also a couple of chances for snow in the seven-day as well. And for the Pier area, upper 30s to near 40 degrees Monday and Tuesday. Then that colder air arrives, high, dropping highs back down to the low to mid-20s there. Chance for snow at the end of the seven-day. Rapid City in western South Dakota, 30s to near 40 degrees to start the work week. And then 20s return later in the work week. Well, thank you for joining us for Keloland on the Go. You can get up in the development developments right here on Keloland.com. Have a great day.